Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. We're going to continually continue talking about God's provision for healing. Now, we, we found in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the basis for this, that healing was in the atonement. He bore our sickness and carried our pain. In other words, our sickness and disease and our pain was upon Jesus on the cross. This, this is found in the Old Testament in the 52nd chapter of Isaiah and the 53rd chapter. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, healing was in the atonement. Now, I realize that some people haven't been taught that, and they, they have been taught that healing passed away with the apostles, but, but it didn't. We find it uh, all through the book of Acts, and, and not only that, we see it happening today because this is the eternal Word of God, the New Testament. I want to get into the Luke, the fifth chapter today, and, and let's look at verse 17. And it says, It came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now, I want you to notice, it says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. You know, one of the, one of the things that people misunderstand about the power, healing power of God uh, that was in the atonement, uh, people say, well, you know, Every, everybody that Jesus touched got healed, and, and uh, they can understand that. But if you study a little deeper in the Word of God, you'll find that in, uh, um, I believe it's Mark, the sixth chapter, that Jesus went into his own hometown, and the Bible says he could there do no mighty works because of their unbelief. Now, in uh, about eight of the what we would call miracles of healing, of the, I think there are 12 recorded in the Bible that Jesus, what we'd call miracles of healing, um, eight of those says emphatically that Jesus said it was their faith that made them whole. Now, some people misunderstand that. They think, well, now, if, if uh, you know, the other guy has faith, I'll get healed. Not always so. When, when you're born again and need to get in the Word of God and have faith for yourself, Sometimes you can get young Christians healed by your faith, but when it comes a time when they should grow up, you know, it's kind of like a child that's just running around, crawling on the floor and sucking a bottle. Uh, you don't expect them to do that when they're five, six years old. You need to grow up and use your faith. So here we find that the, the power of God was present to heal them. Now, who's, who's them? Talking about the multitude. The power of God was there to heal the whole multitude. And behold, a man uh, brought in a bed, and behold, men brought in a bed, a man, which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him un and lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find a way, they might bring him to him because of the multitude. They went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling and the roof. In other words, they tore the roof off the house, let him down through it. Now, can you imagine Jesus there teaching in this house, and, uh, and they hear some hammering and knocking around up there on the roof, and, and directly uh, they start letting a man down uh, <laughs> through the roof in the presence of this multitude. And when he saw their faith, now notice this, they let him down in the midst of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, here's something that I want you to get a hold of. We're talking about making the man know God's provision for healing. God's provision's already made. It was made when Jesus died. As far as God's concerned, it was a finished work then. God doesn't have to do one more thing for you to be healed. But notice here, faith has something to do with it. These men had faith, or they wouldn't have carried him up on the roof. The fellow that... that they carried up on the roof must have had some faith, or he wouldn't let them carry him up on the roof, you know. I mean, the fellow's sick, and he's paralyzed, and they take him up on the roof. He falls off. He's going to be in worse shape. So the Bible says when he saw their faith, you, you know, he could tell by their works they had faith. Uh, that's what uh, James said. I'll, I'll show you my faith by my works, you know. Uh, now, notice here he says, 
And the, the scribes and the Pharisees reasoned among themselves, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? Now Jesus said to the man, Man, that your sins are forgiven you. Now you need to understand this, why he said that and why this is recorded in the Bible. This man probably uh, was condemned over his sin, and possibly a, it was sin that caused his sickness. We don't know for sure, but we know that sin is the root cause of all sickness. In other words, there was no, there was no sickness until sin came on earth. Now, it doesn't mean that a certain sickness is because of a certain sin, not necessarily. You know, there's viruses and all kinds of things that are, uh, you can get through the air and so on that causes problems. But notice, he said, man, your sins be forgiven you. In other words, let me take a scripture that John talked about in, in the John's, uh, first, first John, I believe it is. John said, If our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence in him. And whatsoever we ask of him, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now this man, if he's condemned over his sin, the first thing Jesus said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. In other words, the sin is not your problem right now. He said, What you need to do is, is believe and release your faith. Now what he's doing is removing the question mark. See, faith always stops at the question mark. If you're not fully persuaded of the Word of God concerning healing or finances or whatever, then you're probably not going to enter into it because faith always stops at the question mark. Now, the scribes, they, they said, who, who can forgive sin but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, uh, why, What reason are you in your heart? Whether it easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee, or rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thy house. And immediately he arose up before him, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed into his own house, glorifying God. And they were amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Well, what you see here is Jesus removed the question mark from this man's mind. God is saying to us through the Scriptures that provision has already been made. And uh, faith makes a demand on the provision. Now, it states here that when he saw their faith. Now, you'll notice in every place in the Scriptures where faith was found, healing was the result when there was sickness involved. You, you go to the fifth chapter of Mark, and you find that the woman with the issue of blood and in fact, to give you the context of it, Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, he had come to Jesus and said, uh, My little daughter is at the point of death, and, uh, but if you come lay your hands on her, she'll be healed and she shall live. Now notice this statement that he made. He said, If you lay your hands on my little daughter, she'll be healed and she'll live. Now he had great faith that if Jesus lays his hands on his daughter, his daughter will live. And he spoke his faith. As we believe, we therefore speak, the Scripture says. So you always speak your faith. So he spoke it. Now Jesus just left the whole multitude and started walking with this one fellow going to his house. And uh, the Bible says there was a woman with the issue of blood that had had this disease for 12 years now. And uh, she, she heard about Jesus. Well, what did she hear about Jesus? Evidently she heard that people that touched Jesus got healed and that uh, the, the anointing of God was upon him because Peter says, you know, that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now notice it states that he healed those that were oppressed of the devil. In other words, sickness and disease, Peter said, was an oppression of the devil. Now some of you have been convinced that it's a blessing from God and God's teaching you something, and as long as you have that attitude, you're not going to get healing more than likely you will not be healed because uh, you don't understand that this thing is not of God. Sickness and disease is not of God. God doesn't have any sickness. There's not any in heaven. You, you couldn't, you couldn't, he couldn't put sickness on you. In fact, we know that the Scriptures teaches, and we'll get into some more of them later, that sickness becomes, comes because of Satan. And it is a curse. It's not a blessing. 
And as long as you believe that it's doing God a service, you're going to suffer with it. But you need to understand that God wants you well. Now, this woman said, when I touch his clothes, I'll be restored to health. Now, you know, the Bible doesn't say Jesus' clothes was anointed with the Holy Ghost. However, it did say that those that touched him uh, were healed. So this woman had Bible faith. Now, how do we know she had Bible faith? Because she said, when I touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Now, in the book of Numbers, God told them to sew a border, a fringe around the border of their garment which represented the covenant of God. And you see, there's healing in that covenant. And uh, so her faith was in the covenant of God. And she's making a demand on the provision. That, that healing is in the covenant. And she's making a demand on that provision. So she started saying, the first thing she started saying is, when I touch his clothes, I'll be restored to health. The Bible says she, uh, Amplified says she continually said that on the way down there. Now, she elbowed her way through that crowd and come upon Jesus. And when she did, there's Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, the man that can have her stoned to death, legally can have her stoned to death for being out in public in her condition. It was a capital offense to be in, her, in public in her condition. But she said, I'll slip up behind Jesus, get my healing, and no one will ever know. Well, she slipped up and touched the border of his garment. She, that was her point of contact to release my faith when I touched the border of his garment. I've touched the covenant of God, and I believe the anointing of God will bring healing to me. And Jesus felt power go out of him. When he touched her, uh, the Bible says that uh, he said, somebody touched me. And he looked around to see who it was and said, who touched me? And the, the multitude had touched him. I mean, throng there. They said, uh, there's a multitude here. Well, but there's only one woman there that got her healing because she made a demand on God's provision. That provision was in the covenant. And she released her faith in the anointing of God at a point of contact of touching the border of Jesus' garment remove the question mark with her words. When I touch his clothes, I'll be restored to health. She set a time when she was going to release her faith. You need to do that. Some of you have been saying, God's going to heal me sometime. Set a time that you release your faith for healing, and you'll get the results that this woman got. Now, see, we're talking about how to make a demand on God's provision. And, and here in the uh, fifth chapter of Mark, the woman with the issue of blood just simply uh, applied the principles of the law of faith, which says, Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart, believe what he's saying will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Well, I don't know how she knew that, because she couldn't read Mark eleven twenty three 23 and the New Testament scriptures that we have, but she started saying it. And, and, you know, some people say, well, you know, I've had this for 40 years. I guess it'll be the death of me yet. Uh, don't, don't speak those words. Begin to say what God said about you and uh, bring healing. Now, in the Mark, the fifth chapter, when the woman's issue of blood was healed, she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Power flowed out of him because she made a demand, her faith. Now, listen to me. Her faith made a demand on the provision of healing that flowed through Jesus. Now, somebody said, well, yeah, but you see, Jesus healed her. But, but really, he didn't. No, he really didn't, because the Bible said Jesus turned around and said to the woman, said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. And I'm, I want to tell you, if you get a hold of the Word of God, your faith can make you whole. She used Jesus' garment as a point of contact to release her faith and get her healing. And thank God she did. She was healed and delivered. Now, now let me show you why it's important to remove the question mark. If you go to the Mark, the first chapter, and I think we may have said something about this before, but it, it bears repeating because this is important. It's an important uh, point to understand in releasing your faith. You have the, a story here where a leper comes to Jesus. In verse 39, and it's talking about Jesus, said he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee. And he cast out devils or demons. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, saying, kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt. Now notice the man's question. He said, If you will, thou canst make me clean. Now he, he knew that Jesus could. That's the reason he came to Jesus. But he, did, he was not sure that he would. 
Now, you see, some of you have thought, well, you know, it may not be God's will to heal me. I mean, get into the Word of God. It was paid for in the atonement. God's not sitting up there and deciding who He's going to, you know, give healing to. It's available to all under the covenant. Uh, read Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the first, uh, about the first 10 verses. He bore our sickness. He carried our pain. Talking about Jesus. So it was all finished at Calvary. He didn't have to do anything. See, a lot of times we're praying for God to do something He's already done when we just need to line up with the Scriptures, get the Word of God in our mouth, set a point of contact to release our faith. I heard Brother Copeland say one time uh, he got his healing by pulling a little chain on a light bulb, you know. He, he just used as a point of contact to release his faith. He said he, he prayed and confessed the Word of God. He said, when I pull this light switch, I'm going to get my healing. Well, it was a point of contact. This is what this man came to Jesus. Now, he said, I know you can, but I don't know whether you will or not. So, Watch what happened. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him. Now, he deliberately, Jesus deliberately laid his hands on this man for the purpose of bringing healing to him. No power flowed. Nothing happened to the man. He's just as leprous as he ever was until Jesus answered his question. Now, Mark's the only one that records this, this way. That's why you ought to study all the Gospels to find out everything that they said about it, because one writer will catch one point the other didn't get. And notice he says, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Immediately. Now, that's quicker than New York minutes, you know. But no power flowed. Now, in... Uh, multitudes that throng Jesus at times, you'll find that every person that touched Jesus or every person that Jesus touched, and sometimes everybody in the whole multitude got healed, whether they touched him or not. Now, if it's just God's will to heal some and not others, then uh, isn't it amazing that they were able to get just the right people in the whole multitude, that it was the right people that God wanted to heal? See, the truth of the matter is that, that God wants you well. He doesn't want you sick and diseased and crippled in life. And uh, it's, it, healing is available uh, through the covenant of God. Uh, confess the Word of God. Build your faith. Uh, Jesus said to the woman to issue blood, said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Well, you see, she had great hope. She was elbowing her way through that crowd because she hoped to be healed, because she'd heard about Jesus. And you may have heard about healing. You may hope to be healed. But you see, she said, when I touch his clothes, I'll be restored to health. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling you that you're going to set an exact time to receive, that you're going to get the manifestation of your healing. I'm talking about setting an exact time that you believe you receive. See, Mark 11, 23 and 24 gives us the principle of the law of faith. Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart, believe what he is saying will come to pass, he shall have. Whatsoever he saith, therefore what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Now, when are you going to believe? When you pray. Not when you receive. When you pray, you're going to believe. So you believe you received when you pray. So there's a time set a definite time that you released your faith and believed that you received your healing. Then after that, you begin to thank God and praise Him for that healing until you get the results of it. Confess the Word of God. Meditate the Word of God. You see, the Bible says that God sent His Word and healed us and delivered us. Well, there's healing in the Word. Now, this, uh, this man, this leper, no healing power flowed, even though Jesus laid his hands on him. There was no healing that flowed to him until Jesus removed the question mark. Now, some of you have got questions about, is it God's will to heal? Is it God's will to heal me? Well, you have to get in the Word of God and see what Jesus said. It'll remove the question mark. Now, I always say it this way. If you have questions about uh, whether it's God's will to heal or, or different questions, uh, read the red. In other words, everything Jesus said, and here's red. Read the red. You get into the 10th chapter of John, and uh, John 10.10 10 is what I call the dividing line of the Bible. 
I mean, it divides into right down the middle. Here's what it says. The thief, which he's talking about Satan, the thief cometh not but for. There's only three reasons that Satan came in to the earth. To kill, to steal, and to destroy God's creation. That's the only reason he's here. To kill, to steal, and destroy. Now, you will notice that Jesus did not say that the thief comes to test you and make you stronger. He didn't come to put sickness on you to make you more like Jesus. No. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come. Now, he told you what Satan came to do. Steal, kill, and destroy through deception, th through sickness, through disease, through wickedness. Jesus said, I am come. Thank God Jesus came, that you might have life and have it more abundantly until it overflows, in other words. Now, how do you get sickness out of that? Now, Jesus said, I do only that which I see my Father do. Now, you read all the red and you read all the New Testament, and see if you can find any place that Jesus ever put any sickness on anybody. Now, if God's putting sickness on folks to teach them something, surely Jesus would have done that while he was here on earth. But you never see that. You never see Jesus ever alluding to any fact, to, to any, any allusion to, to the idea that God would ever put sickness on anyone. Now, folks, that's child abuse. That's not, see, God's our Heavenly Father. And I've heard people say, and I, you know, heard it on television not long ago, this fellow got killed because he riding in a vehicle, didn't have his seatbelt fastened, it turned over and killed him. And, and uh, one of the relatives said, well, you know, God works in mysterious ways. That wasn't God at work. That's the devil at work. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy, and uh, now, it, they think that God took him. In fact, the man said, uh, the, the Lord took him, and the Lord works in mysterious ways. No, the Lord didn't took him. <laughs> no, he did not take him. I see in the Bible where God took one man. He took Enoch, and he took him alive to heaven. No, God's not killing, stealing, and destroying. But uh, isn't it amazing that if the man would have had his seatbelt fastened, God wouldn't have worked in that mysterious way the guy thought he did? No. The man's life would have been saved. He had his seatbelt fastened. So if it's God's will for these people to die and, and God's just picking out who's going to die today, isn't it amazing that he leaves off the people that have their seatbelt fastened, uh, most of them? Not God's will for as, as many to be crippled if they wear their seatbelt. Now, how, how would wearing a seatbelt change God's will? <laughs> now, I think you can see what I'm, the point I'm bringing out here. No, uh, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So here's the man that immediately the leprosy departed from him because the question mark is removed. And when the question mark is removed, healing was the result because Jesus said, I will be thou clean and immediately the leprosy departed from him. Now, here's the thing about it. God's Word is truth, whether you ever believe it or not. And if you've been taught wrong, you would believe wrong. And I know that. I understand that. And, and some of you have been taught that healing went out with the apostles, not God's will to heal today. Or some of you have been taught that God will heal sometimes, but sometimes He makes you sick. I encourage you to get in the Word of God and study the Word of God. The Word of God doesn't teach that. That is Greek mythology, uh, where they, they thought that there's 100 million gods or 300 million gods, and they're just making everything happen on the earth. No, you see, things are happening on this earth because men allow it to happen. Good news, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Make a demand on God's provision for healing. It'll work for you. I'll tell you it will. Now, I want to uh, make again the offer. I, I want to offer this offer called Offer 2124. It's called Making a Demand on God's Provision for Healing. Now, I know we've made it before, 
but we've had such a demand on it, we, we want as many that want it to have it. It's uh, a video called Making a Demand on God's Provision for Healing, the little booklet, God's Creative Power for Healing, which is a confession book, a teaching on healing in it, talking about uh, spiritual law and the spiritual cure, and uh, then it has confessions in the based on the authority of the Word of God for healing. Now, these confessions are not, you know, word for word for what it says in the Scripture, but it's based on the Scriptures. And uh, one of the confessions in here is that, that my immune system grows stronger day by day. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me and quickens my immune system with the life and the wisdom of God, which guards the life and health of my body. You see, God has given us life through His Son, Jesus. And uh, the confession will help you to get the image inside you where you'll see yourself well. We're also offering with this, this offer, it's 2124, the audio uh, tape of Making a Demand on God's Provision for Healing, the video, and the booklet. Three, all for the price of $20. And uh, it'll be a blessing to you. That's, that address is Charles Capps Ministries, England, Arkansas, zip code 72046. And we also have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. I'll tell you what, you'll be blessed by this, and uh, you probably know much more people that need it, and it'll be a blessing to you. Now, I want to I wanna take time and talk to you just a little bit about being a partner with this ministry and tell you how much I appreciate you partners that have been partners with us. We have some that have been partners with us since 1977. Went on radio in 1977. We're now on 150 or 60 stations throughout this nation, and we're on about 16 or 17 uh, cities on television. And we appreciate you partners, and uh, we send our partners that support this broadcast monthly, we send them a letter with a little teaching pamphlet in it. It takes you about 10, 15 minutes to read it. It'll be a blessing to you. And uh, if you'd like to become a partner with us, well, just write us. And someone said, how do you become a partner? Well, uh, if you support the broadcast, any amount that the Lord directs you, we consider you a partner. And uh, that toll-free order line again is 1-877-396-9400. Until tomorrow or until the next time, this is Charles Caps, And I want to remind you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus Christ is still Lord and He is coming soon, and don't you ever forget it. He's coming. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.